the other thing is proxy r and proxy this is uh, i misspell it should be two uh, i think the next one is this one right? yeah this is two so i just rearrange this slide because i said proxy r should come first uh, so what is proxy r as i told you we have traditional r traditional r then we have proxy r okay and the last one is gratuitous r so let's discover what is proxy r first so proxy r is the criteria is uh, we could have uh, yeah so in this case before we had a switch okay in a traditional r now this time we have this router and you know what router do it will cut down the broadcast it will never allow broadcast travel here so there this is a segregation point so what in case if we have the router in the middle and we have one host machine host b wants to communicate with the host d but they are on different subnet so on behalf of uh, this computer it is going to communicate with this so this is known as the proxy r proxy r occurs when one node is responding to an r request on behalf of another node so on behalf of this node this one is responding to this one and vice versa okay so i have uh, if i can show you the just a minute the animation as well like the arp is sent it's saying if there is someone out there with ip 10.04.44 please send me your mac here is my mac so uh, this is basically uh, just looking for this uh, host machine so it will send the r and we know the router uh, will receive that r request and it will say i know how to get to this device so on behalf of this device it is going to entertain this device so this is the concept is proxy r and it is very important concept we you uh, uh, in interview questions uh, they often ask this kind of uh, concept what is proxy r so i have mentioned what is the difference between the proxy r and default gateway i told you every edge router has uh, the default gateway that is configured to go to the isp or the internet or the cloud whatever so this is default gateway so there is a clear distinct when you are trying to communicate the other host that in your lan segment in the lan segment but segregated with the help of router that is proxy r we want to communicate this device with this device the router will be the place that will you know uh, take care of this device on behalf of, the, of this device but if we talk about the default gateway that is a different story now this device wants to communicate with the ip or let's say the job skill share dot org which has ip like 67 dot 65 dot whatever the public ip when this request will go into the router router will look into its routing table and it will see that okay i am connected with this uh, lan segment and this lan segment but i have no idea about what this 67 is so this is where default way, gateway comes into play and help us out reaching this job skill share so this is a clear difference between the default gateway versus the proxy i hope it is uh, you get the point 
Yes. I think so. <laughs> okay, just go through once. You know, this is very confusing uh, at the beginning. Means, uh, I, I'm telling you my story. Means, uh, when I uh, when I learned these things, um, I couldn't get what is what is going on. Unless until I I hit the high level concept like in the CCNA, and then I just move further slowly slowly to the CCNT, and then I had um, you know I have a clear idea what is proxy of what is traditional of why we need that thing why what is the like you know I am giving you these uh, real uh, case uh, studies here. They are the real case uh, studies uh, when you have to go default gateway. That concept is different opposed to the proxy art. Okay, and then what you can do, you can go to the Google and just type out proxy art, and uh, you can go a lot in detail in the theoretical uh, wise. Yeah, many people at this point have that thought of like, man, I'm not getting it, and yes. this is this is a very common and a very natural thing for any IT professional by the way. So the way you get it is that you go over it once, you saw the demonstrations, you'll do it in the lab, then you will understand little pieces of it. Then you're gonna go in a little bit more advanced and you're gonna see this in a little more practical way of doing it on a real systems. Then you get to understand the whole picture. Then you get actually a project where you work in your home, like your work environment and you get to understand something that is beyond any courses. That's where you get it. And it's just natural. So for now, it's more of like a memory. You keep it, you understand it, you work it, you practice it. Then later on, you're just gonna come across this for sure, some of these things. Some some of these, you actually don't. Some companies apply it, some, some companies don't. So it's, it's all about you just gaining information at this point and understanding, uh, you know, all of that. Yeah, and this is just for interview questions point of view, you know, you're not going to use this ARP in your uh, production environment because this, these things are automatically happening. Okay, so you don't have to worry about, but at least you must have idea about what proxy ARP is, what uh, inverse ARP, there's some other ARPs as well, we are going to discuss in the CCNA, and then what traditional ARP, what gratuitous ARP, okay, so you just have uh, the concept what is happening behind the scene. And this is also very good in troubleshooting as well. So you can uh, correlate uh, what MAC address belong to what uh, IP, uh, what uh, IP and uh, host machine. And I will show you, I will show you, don't worry. The last one is uh, gratuitous up. I don't know if I'm uh, saying it right, but this is, it sounds like gratuitous up. And uh, what gratuitous ARP is, is an ARP response that was not prompted by an ARP request. The gratuitous ARP is sent as a broadcast as a way for a node to announce or update its IP to map mapping to the entire network. So this is very useful gratuitous ARP in our LAN environment. Why? And this is very simple concept. We have the switch. And let's see, we have like 100 devices connected. Okay, like 100 devices connected. Then we have one uh, access point, which is having default gateway. So we can go to the internet. But this access point will also have MAC address. Just like these all 100 devices will have. Now, do you really, for example, this is PC1 and you are sitting here. So what do you think uh, for your switch to learn this PC1 uh, all the way to 100 PC and then access point, do you think uh, you will ping one by one and uh, uh, this camp table will be populated? No. The thing that comes into play is gratuitous ARP. And this is by default. This switch has a capability to send the broadcast itself to everyone. And even the access point. This is how it is going to populate its camp table 
automatically. That's why I told you this is a default process. It is not like you know you will go and you will um, do the you will uh, populate the camp table one by one. No, no, no. The gratuitous R will help us will do that thing easily. It will just send that gratuitous R everywhere. And this is how it is going to learn about all the connected devices that are connected with the switch. Think about it like you, you got a switch, it got connected. You have 50, sorry, you have, let's say, 24 machines on that. And sometimes you, as a network engineer, sysadmin, security admin, you don't go and start going into each machine's try to find out their addresses or MAC addresses. What do you do? You actually go into the, the switch and you basically scan that switch, right? You, you yeah. kind of get into the scanning through SNMP or some other method, and then you find out all this information right from the switch. And that's what this is doing, actually. That information is given to that, uh, you know. And, but of course, you can get into those scanning the machine directly for other security stuff and stuff, anything like that is different thing. But information can be taken out of the switch like that because it's automatically doing that help for you. So you're not, he's right, you're not going to go to 1,000 machines and try to ping it to, so then the switch can learn about it. This is where this will play a big role in that. And the, other than that, uh, it is also very handy in finding or detecting the duplicated edges. So what if this switch have these two computers and they are configured with the same IP, same IP. So on your computer, you will get kind of error like IP conflict, conflict, conflict detected, something like that. With that uh, happen with the help of gratuitous software. 